After leaving Lourdes in France, our group crossed the Pyrenees Mountains into the country of Spain, our first destination being the capital city, Madrid. Madrid, since the year 1561, the capital of Spain, and today Spain's largest city with a population of roughly 3.3 million people. Let's start our tour of Madrid with a visit to the Plaza de la Villa, meaning town square. It is a picturesque small square in the heart of Madrid. The largest building in the square is the former town hall, or Casa de la Villa, constructed between the years 1644 and 1696. Over its lifespan, the building served as a prison and as Madrid's town hall until the year 2007. At the center of the square is a statue of Alvaro de Brazen, the unfortunate Spanish admiral who commanded the Spanish Armada that attempted to invade England in 1588 during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. It is a short walk to our next locale, Plaza Mayor, a grand arcaded square in the center of Madrid and Madrid's main square. Built between the years 1617 and 1619, Plaza Mayor over its life has been the center of festivities, bullfights, royal coronations and executions. It is still used today for public celebrations. There can be many strange sights to see in Madrid's Plaza Mayor, such as a buccaneering pirate or rather large rodents. We've had a full day in Madrid. It's time now to head to a local restaurant and have a fine meal and enjoy some of the local entertainment. You know you're traveling with Australians when... A little bit of baked Alaska would be a fine topper for this good meal. We'll have a nice dessert to end supper if they can avoid burning down the restaurant first. Yeah, I'm gonna 
after a good night's sleep, we are ready to continue our tour of Madrid. Next up is the Plasico Real, or Royal Palace of Madrid. The palace is the official residence of the King of Spain in the city of Madrid, but is only used for state ceremonies. King Juan Carlos and the royal family do not reside in this palace, choosing instead a more modest palace on the outskirts of Madrid. Let's take a look inside the palace. Madrid's royal palace contains 3,000 rooms many of which are available to the public on escorted tours. And the palace is considered by many to be one of the finest palaces in Europe. Built by King Philippe V between 1738 and 1764, the royal palace is built on the site of an older castle which was destroyed by fire on Christmas Eve, 1734. It's time to bid farewell to Madrid's royal palace and continue on with our tour of Madrid. Next, let's visit Plaza de España, or Spain Square as it is known in English, which contains a statue of Spain's most famous literary characters, Don Quixote and his loyal squire, Sancho Panza. This afternoon, my tour group is taking a side trip out of Madrid to the former capital of Spain, Toledo. Toledo is located in central Spain, 70 kilometers south of Madrid, and was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1986 due to its history and well-preserved antique buildings. Populated since the Bronze Age, Toledo grew to importance during Roman times, and after the fall of the Roman Empire, the Visigoths named Toledo their capital. After the Moors conquered the Iberian Peninsula in the 8th century, Toledo retained its importance under Arab occupation. When the Spanish armies regained control of the city on the 25th of May 1085 under Alfonso VI of Castile, Toledo became the official residence to the Spanish kings and queens until the 16th century. During the 13th century, Toledo became one of the few places in Spain where Moors, Christians, and Jews managed to live together and tolerate each other more or less peacefully. Toledo had large communities of both Muslims and Jews until the Jews were expelled from Spain in 1492 and the Muslims were expelled in 1502. In 1561, Philip II moved the royal court from Toledo to Madrid, and Toledo started a slow decline, which helped preserve its historical buildings.
Construction of the Cathedral of Toledo was begun in the year 1226 under the rule of Ferdinand III and was finished in 1493. The cathedral is richly decorated and has paintings by Spain's great artist, El Gecko. At the entrance to the choir, there is a 12th century alabaster statue of the Madonna and Child, which is beloved for its sweetness and intimacy, and is known as the White Virgin because of its predominant color. The most important treasure in the cathedral is the great monastrat of Alf. Made of the finest silver and gold and bejeweled with gems, it measures over 10 feet tall. The monastrat is famous for being used in the annual feast of Copa Christi of Toledo. Toledo has been a traditional sword making and steel working center since about 500 BC and it is also the home for many craftsmen working in gold and silver. Our time in Toledo has come to an end. We will return to Madrid for the night before carrying on our adventures in Spain tomorrow. After departing from Madrid, we continued our adventures in Spain by traveling to the city of Barcelona. Located at the site where he returned to Spain after his first voyage to the Americas, the Columbus Monument marks one end of Barcelona's main thoroughfare, La Rambla. La Rambla is a 1.2 kilometer walkway through the very heart of the city center. La Rambla is primarily pedestrianized with only two narrow one-way traffic roads which run on either side of the central boulevard. Here you will see all sorts of stalls, restaurants, bars, and street performers along with many thousands of people that promenade up and down La Rambla until the early hours of the morning. In addition to the thousands of tourists and locals that meander along La Rambla, there is also another group of individuals that are attracted here for a completely different reason. They are interested in taking advantage of tourists who are they? Pickpockets and scam artists. During my visit to Barcelona in 2009, at least five people from my tour group had their wallets stolen here. Using this as a warning, on my visit to La Rambla in 2011, I left my wallet and most of my money in the hotel room, and the credit card I had along with me was safely deposited in my sock. Luckily, this year, the uh, visit to La Rambla went off incident-free. Located on a side street about halfway down La Rambla is St. Joseph Market, which is a large public market under its own open side roof and is one of the city's foremost tourist landmarks. The market sells a very diverse selection of fruit, vegetables, meat and fresh fish.
Barcelona was also the home of Spanish Catalanian architect and figurehead of the Catalanian modernism movement, Antonio Gaudi. His work transcends the mainstream, culminating in an organic style inspired by nature. Gaudi rarely drew detailed plans of his work, instead preferring to create them as three-dimensional scale models and molding the details as he was conceiving them. Gaudi's work enjoys widespread international appeal and many studies are devoted to understanding his architecture. Gaudi's Roman Catholic faith intensified during his life and religious images filter into his work. This is most aptly demonstrated by his greatest masterpiece, the still uncompleted Sangria Familica. Construction of the Sangria Familica commenced in 1882 and Gaudi became involved in 1883. From 1915 until his death in 1926, Gaudi devoted himself almost exclusively to this project. After Gaudi's death, work on the Sangria Familica progressed slowly as it relied on private donations and was interrupted by the Spanish Civil War, only to resume with intermittent progress in the 1950s. In 2012, after 130 years, the job is considered to be about half complete, with an estimated completion date of 2026. Let's end our visit to Barcelona with an evening of fine food and drink before watching the Flamingo Dancers. This afternoon finds us on our way to Montserrat, a mountain located near the city of Barcelona. Montserrat, translated to English, literally means jagged or serrated and is a good name for this rugged mountain. Montserrat is best well known as the site of a Benedictine abbey, Santa Maria de Montserrat. The abbey was founded in the year 1035 AD and is located 4,055 feet above the valley floor and is home to about 80 monks. The abbey is the shrine of Our Lady of Montserrat. The monastery is uh, Catalonia's most important religious retreat and groups of young people from Barcelona and all over Catalonia make overnight hikes at least once in their lives to watch the sun rise from the heights of Montserrat. According to Catholic tradition, the statue of the Black Virgin of Montserrat was carved by St. Luke around 50 AD and brought to Spain. It was later hidden from the Moors in a cave where it was discovered by shepherds in 880 AD. They saw a bright light and heard heavenly music which led them to the statue. Well, our time in Spain has come to an end. Tomorrow we will head back to France, to the French Riviera.